What's up guys? So today I've got another video that kind of continues on the trend of semi-educational engineering videos that I've been making lately. This one is basically an installation guide and product review for the BL Touch module made by Creality for the Ender series of 3D printers. This product has a fairly mixed reputation. There's a number of people who claim that it never worked well for them, that it didn't work at all. And after having installed it myself and having used it for several weeks, my opinion is that it is a really, really good module, but the installation booklet sucks. It's horrible. It basically tried to write itself for several printers at once, but never actually told you that. So you'll find steps that you don't have to do on your printer. You'll find that there are steps you have to do on your printer that aren't in the booklet. Uh, they even have like pictures and screenshots that are from different printers and it, it's just really rough. So if you don't have the Ender 3v2, uh, watch this, I guess, if it's entertaining. Um, definitely don't use this as an installation guide. If you have an Ender 3v2, then this is for you. Nice. Um, before we jump into the installation itself, let's talk about what exactly the BL Touch is. Um, the BL Touch is basically a sensor that you put on the print head, and it tells the printer how far above the bed the print head is. And it measures a whole bunch of different spots on the print bed before the print starts so that the printer can actually adjust for a bed that isn't completely level. If one corner is a little bit low, then the print head will actually track down to match it. it. It's really cool. I absolutely love this thing. But the only problem is that I thought that in doing so, it would know how far above the print head that the nozzle is, and so it should just be a measure and go kind of thing. And that's actually not true, because it's not mounted to the nozzle. It's mounted to the print head. And the nozzle is also mounted to the print head, but the problem is that because they're mounted separately, there's no way for it to actually know where your nozzle's at, which means that you actually do have to calibrate this unit. Um, and it's not hard and it's not a pain, but it's something you're gonna have to do. And that kind of brings us into the prep work. There's a few things that you're gonna need before we go into this. The first one is the ability to level a 3D printer by hand. This, of course, is because you're going to have to calibrate the BL Touch. That being said, you're gonna calibrate it in one spot one time and it'll remember the settings and you should be good to go for quite a while, but you are definitely gonna to have to be able to calibrate it and get it right. The second thing you're gonna need is you're gonna to need to take the firmware that matches your 3D printer and put it onto an SD card. Preferably also delete everything else on that SD card. It shouldn't be a problem, but you might as well. Um, big note there though, is I downloaded the latest version for my 3D printer. That's not what they're talking about. It has to match what's currently on there. So if your 3D printer currently has 1.11, make sure when you download the BL Touch firmware from Creality, you're downloading 1.11 BL Touch and not something newer or something older. So make sure they line up. Uh, third thing you're gonna have to do is take the G code that they mentioned in the instruction booklet, insert it into your favorite slicer. That actually is covered in the instructions like I mentioned, but I would definitely do that before you go to install it. Um, it just makes things easier. And then that brings us to the fourth step, which is take a bed leveling test print and slice it with that G code in there. Um, I have the one that I used for this. Uh, I posted it on Thingiverse, links in the description, but yeah, if you've got one that you are already familiar with, that you already kind of know how it responds and how to read it, then by all means, keep using that. If you don't have one, this is kind of a nice alternative. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's hop over to installation. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is turn the power on and auto home the print head. And then from here, we're going to be moving the print head into a much more accessible location and we'll be turning the printer off and disconnecting the power since we're about to be opening it up here in just a little bit. From here the installation manual says to remove the shroud for the nozzle so we're going to yank those two screws out. Then we're gonna pop this off it's just held on by those two clips and we're gonna grab the mounting bracket out of the box and then we're gonna realize that it doesn't quite fit and then underneath the mounting bracket they supplied are another two mounting brackets. Uh, these ones are substantially harder to get out of the box. Uh, this one actually is the one that goes to the Ender 3v2, and if you look, we don't even need to take the shroud off. So we're going to start by putting the shroud right back on where it went. 
And then we're gonna put these two screws right back where they came from. These, these instructions are absolutely wonderful, by the way. Okay, so that's where the mounting bracket's gonna go. We're going to start by screwing the BL touch in backwards and then installing the mounting bracket that way because I'm an absolute smooth brain who has no idea what I'm doing. We're gonna realize our mistakes and weep and then we're going to uninstall the mounting bracket and flip the BL touch around and then we're actually gonna plug the wiring connectors in now because it's a rather tight space that it's going into. We're gonna reinstall it and we're finally gonna be good to go. And then from here, we're going to start clipping the old zip ties that held some of the wiring bundles together. And I'm going to loosely put new zip ties there. We'll come back, tighten them down later, but it's important to get the wires into place first. So from here, we can tip the 3D printer on its side so we can actually access the main board on the underside. OK, so from here, we've got one more zip tie that we can clip so we can route our wires. And then we have three screws that we have to unscrew so that we can actually access the main board. Uh, so unscrew those and then give that thing a nice pull and you'll find that I just lied to you. There's actually a fourth screw. Can you find it? Do you see it? <laughs> That's right. It's under the print bed way back here. So you're going to unscrew that dude and the thing's going to pop off super easily. Just be careful not to eat the fan. OK, so that's the Z-axis stop switch that we have to unplug. And that is where we have to plug the BL touch into. It's a tight fit, but you can do it. And then we're going to loosely put the one last zip tie on. And then it's just four screws to put the mainboard cover on. How hard could it be? This is this is the real footage of me doing this and not the reversed footage from earlier. Uh, it definitely didn't take me 45 minutes to put these four screws back in in real life. And then we're actually going to go tighten the zip ties down and clip them short. It is important to note that you should never clip the zip tie flush. You want to have a short tail, but you do want to have a little bit of a tail there. While I was cutting these last few wires, I was formatting and installing the latest BL Touch firmware onto this SD card. You're going to want to plug it in upside down and backwards because they cancel out, and this printer only accepts upside down SD cards. Plug it in, and then go turn that thing on. Okay, so now we just got to wait for it to update. Unless we bricked it. Updated? Bricked. Updated? Bricked. Oh, damn it. What have we done? Uh, oh, okay. Whew. Whew. Just got to take a breath. A little bit of patience goes a long way. Okay, cool. We even have the level option, so it looks like it took well. Let's just go auto home the print head so that we can actually play with it. Oh, no. We killed it. Oh, God. What have we done? The good news is that uh, the fix is pretty simple. All we have to do is instead of grabbing the latest version of the firmware, grab the version that matches the 3D printer, just grab the BL Touch version and then everything should be fine from there. And the 3D printer will auto home itself and you'll notice that instead of using the Z limit switch, it'll actually use the BL Touch for the Z homing, which is pretty nice. So it was at this point that I pretty much thought that uh, everything was super smooth sailing. So I ran the uh, level function and had the 3D printer level itself and you can see the BL Touch will measure nine different points on the print bed, which is pretty dope. So yeah, at this point, the only thing that's left is to go to print and select your favorite bed leveling test model and just let it do its thing. And uh, yep, this is going wonderful. This this bed is perfectly leveled. Um, as you can see, that is, that is exactly what the bed level test is supposed to look like. It's a bit of a complicated pattern, um, but it's, it's a surprisingly optimized design. It can print that pattern off pretty quick. So on the off chance that that's not what the bed level pattern is supposed to end up looking like, we're going to have to calibrate the Z axis offset, which was mentioned absolutely nowhere in the instructions. So to do this, we're going to start by auto homing the print head. And we're going to put a sheet of paper over the bed and move the head all the way down. And it's still going to be hovering pretty far over the sheet of paper. So here's where we're going to start bringing in a negative value to the Z offset. And you're basically just trying to get it so that it feels like it normally does whenever you level a 3D printer by hand. That should give you the optimal spacing. And then the nice thing is that the BL touch will automatically return to this point after it levels and it will call this the zero point. So you should hopefully have to do this exactly once. Once you're done, go and save the setting. And then I usually reboot the printer to make sure that it actually took. And it looks like that took quite nicely. So I'm going to try again to print the test pattern.
And as you guys can see, this one is going substantially better. It's absolutely perfect. It's completely flawless. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, yep, there were definitely only supposed to be three dots there. Uh, definitely wasn't supposed to be five. So here's where you're going to do what you always did and you're gonna re-level it again. And you're, get, you're gonna spend the entire afternoon and into the night leveling this one spot to get it right. But once you do get it, it, it is actually pretty fantastic because all you gotta do is hit print and it will auto home itself. And if you insert the G code into your slicer, it will automatically level itself. And then you'll end up with a perfect print. So yeah, anyways, that process is obviously a little bit involved, but now that you've seen this video and you've kind of been primed on it, it should be super easy just to go out there and knock it out and make it happen. Um, obviously, I exaggerated a few things during the recording. I mean, I clearly wasn't actually playing Mario Party as I waited to see if I bricked my printer or updated my firmware. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, it's it's really not that bad. But yeah, in the end, I think it's a time savings because ultimately it kind of gives you this print and forget kind of mentality where you could slice it on your computer, throw it on an SD card, plug it into the printer, hit print, and you should be good to go at that point. I would babysit it a little bit. Um, there's two errors that I've seen the BL Touch throw. Basically, anytime that red light is actually just blinking while it's not in use, there's an issue. Um, you'll get that if the print head is really close to the build plate um, and it doesn't have room for the little nub to actually test how far away it is. Um, that's no big deal. If you get that, just keep going. It'll fix itself when it auto levels. But if it's still flashing at the end of an auto level session, then I would maybe just reboot the printer and try again. I mean, either way, like I usually hit print walk out of the room, go do stuff, come back, it's in the middle of auto level, walk out, come back, it's in the middle of preheating, make sure the BL touch is good. And then I like to watch at least the start of the skirt and then you're good to go at that point. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know if this video has helped you guys. Let me know if any of you guys have actually used it and it didn't live up to the expectation that I'm setting. Uh, also, let me know if any of you guys follow this guide and it gives you any issues or there's anything I should point out. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as always, feel free to go check out the rest of the content on my channel. On the off chance that you need a good Fusion 360 tutorial, I actually recently put out one of those. Um, if you just are into music and gaming, there's a little bit of that starting to pile up as well. And if you just want to interact with me in real time on Twitch and just absolutely derp around while I'm sucking at some video game, then feel free to check me out over there. Um, yeah, as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one.